amazing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the, lime, the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing, and the old redemption story. And some sweet day, I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due to due him. He plunged me to victory beneath his cleansing flood.
Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of Zechariah The Book of Zechariah Chapter 10 Chapter 10 Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight, because the Lord is with them, and the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their hearts shall rejoice as through wine, yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their hearts shall rejoice in the Lord. I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, and they shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt, and gather them out of Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction, and shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. And I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. Chapter 11 Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Howl, fir tree, for the cedar is fallen. Because the mighty are spoiled, howl, O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage is come down. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled, a voice of the roaring of young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus saith the Lord my God, Feed the flock of the slaughter whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men every one into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his king. And they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, the one I called beauty, and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. Then said I, I will not feed you. That that dieth, let it die, and that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off and let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder that I might break my covenant which I had made with all the people. And it was broken in that day, and so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. 
And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock, The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll remain standing as we collect our tithe and offering now. I read for Malachi chapter 3 verse. It says, Be ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be I wanna 
Like a bird, she's flying from coast to coast. And then, suddenly, an attempt on the bird to roast. But thanks be to God, she cannot be stopped by the host. And thanks to God Almighty, for Jesus has come to save the lost. There's a power coming from Calvary. There's a power coming from the throne. And that power coming from Calvary from the throne will touch you. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped i'm telling you every chain will be broken anything that tied you down call it satan call it sickness call it evil spirit there is a glorious escape for everyone today and that's your story for the month of june as the gck returns with a theme supernatural deliverance from christ live from Ilori Quara State and scheduled to fly across the world, their satellite, social media, radio and television. GCK 2.0. This June, Global Crusade with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumi, River Brains, Supernatural Deliverance from Christ, June 23rd till June 28th, 2022. Your special appointment for the Supernatural Deliverance from Christ has now arrived. Because I'm telling you that every poverty is cancelled sicknesses are cancelled all the infirmities and the works of the devil of the flesh they're cancelled in jesus name get set for together we must fly to our supernatural deliverance from christ's destination your testimony will be greater than you ever imagined dck 2.0 live from ilori quara state join us You don't understand Resurrection Day. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Special day in your life. Resurrection day in your life. And as we experience, in your life. And as we experience the power of his resurrection, I pray this will be the beginning of higher life greater life better life healthier life holier life in jesus name father we thank you for your love we thank you for your power we thank you for what you have done what you are doing and what you will still do we're asking oh lord that today the power of resurrection will be manifest in every life in Jesus' name. Quicken your people, energize your people, empower your people that, Lord, according to your word, there will be total redemption, resurrection, righteousness for everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Today we come to the message on resurrection. We well, already dealt with crucified with Christ. The old self, the old man, the old habit, the old disposition. The old depravity crucified with Christ. 
and now life is different because that old nature had been crucified completely with the Lord crucified with Christ and then we dealt with dead and buried with Christ dead to sin dead to the Adamic nature dead to all the manifestations of sin you are dead to anger dead to alcohol dead to the fear of man dead to the flesh dead to evil in every way dead to self and dead to all the suggestions of satan dead and then that old life is buried completely buried out of sight that all those things that used to knock you down all the things that made you compromise in the past all the things that made your life totally sinful without righteousness as you are dead with Christ all those things are buried with him and now after the resurrection after the death after the burial there is resurrection somebody help me shout resurrection and so we come today to reason with Christ. Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then in verse 2, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth if we're risen with christ that's a change there's a transformation we're saved we're sanctified we're made holy and our affection our love our desire our ambition our aspiration set on things above not on material things on earth not on the mundane things of the world set your affections like you set a watch like you set an alarm and you say at this time i set it for the alarm to ring now you set your love you set your ambition you have set everything within you to look up to the time when christ will come and you're setting your affection and your love on the things of heaven not on the things on the earth in verse 3 for ye are dead for ye are dead for ye are dead you are dead to all those situations of life the things that used to attract you and the things that used to put you and pull you and the things that used to drag you down and to lay the old life all that is dead and you are dead to i mentioned it yesterday all those properties in the village that something will jolt you i mentioned it yesterday that when you are dead that alcohol will not attract you anymore the cigarette will not have attacked attract you anymore and all those things of the world you are dead to them and you stand for christ and stand with christ without any compromise in your life for ye are dead of course you are still alive in the physical but you are dead to the scorners and dead to the evil and dead to the persecution and you are dead to everything for ye are dead and your life is hid with christ in god and then in verse 4 when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory 
Give me a good potter cut. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Risen with Christ. Crucified. Dead. Buried. Risen. New life for everyone in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the realization and revelation of his resurrection. The realization and revelation of his resurrection. Number two, our redemption and righteousness through his resurrection. Number three, the rejoicing and rapture at his return. He's gone to heaven and is coming back again. And then at that time will be our rejoicing at the rapture when he returns. Look at number one. Number one, the realization and revelation of his resurrection three things we're looking at number one the reality of his resurrection not a story and it's not just something like you read in the novel this is real the reality of his resurrection number two the revelation of his resurrection and then number three our regeneration through his resurrection number one the reality of his resurrection you can read that from matthew from mark from luke and from john he rose he died he was buried and he rose again and the reality of that the recognition of that the realization of that that Christ died they saw him dead and he was buried the new way was buried and then on the third day a glorious day he rose from the dead look at John chapter 20 verse 24 in John chapter 20 verse 24 but thomas one of the 12 called didymus was not of them when christ came he had risen from the dead he had appeared to his own disciples and then were told thomas one of the 12 was not there when christ came and showed himself and revealed himself risen lord unto them look at verse 25 the other disciples therefore said unto him we have seen the lord heroes we have seen the lord we have seen the risen lord but he said unto them except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and out and put my finger in the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe he said resurrection Christ risen I know he was nailed to the cross i must put my finger in the print of the nails before i can believe that i know that one of the soldiers threw a spear on his side i must thrust my hand inside the wound the opening before i can believe in verse 26 we're told and after eight days again his disciples were with him and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace 
be unto you. Verse 27. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. He realized that Christ indeed rose from the dead. Verse 29. Jesus says unto him, Thomas, Because thou hast seen, hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed, are they that have not seen and yet believed? We are not there, but we are blessed. I said we are blessed. I said we are blessed. Because we are not like Thomas. Thomas, you believe now because you have seen it. But blessed are those who have not seen yet believed. That's number one, the reality of his resurrection. Number two now, the revelation of his resurrection. What's the difference? The reality of his resurrection and then the revelation of his resurrection. Here is the difference. The disciples, the 12 apostles, they were the apostles of Christ. They saw it. When he was arrested, they saw it when he was betrayed, they saw it when he was crucified, they saw it when he died, and now they saw him, the same Christ, when he rose from the dead. But there were people that were not there when he suffered, when he was betrayed. When he was crucified and when he rose again, Saul of Tarsus had the revelation given to him. People, after that first century, they had the revelation given to them of the resurrection of Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 4. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. Verse 5. And that he was seen. After he rose of service. Seen of the twelve. Look at verse 6. And then he said after that. He was seen of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain until this present hour but some are falling asleep look at verse 7 it says after that it was seen of James and then of all the apostles together verse 8 at last it was seen of me also. At last, it was seen of me also. And I can tell you by revelation that Christ was crucified, who died, rose again. Because at last, it was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. By coming into number three here. Number three, our regeneration, our recreation, our reformation, our transformation through his resurrection. Now, if you just know the story of the resurrection in the hedge, that doesn't bring regeneration. If you just know the story of the revelation, by reading, that doesn't bring regeneration. But when you come to the Lord with your soul, 
with your spirit with your heart and you believe in that resurrection that faith in the resurrection of the lord jesus christ brings a regeneration a transformation a recreation in your life our regeneration through his resurrection look at titus chapter 3 reading from verse 5 not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost verse 6 in verse 6 we are told which is shed on us abundantly through jesus christ our savior then in verse 7 that being justified by his grace the grace the mercy the love the compassion and the virtue from heaven that comes upon our lives because of that resurrection now justified now forgiven now set free now transformed being justified by his grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life look at acts chapter 4 reading from verse 10 acts 4 verse 10 be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom ye crucified whom god raised from the dead god raised him from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you all verse 11 this is the stone which was set at naught of your builders which is become the head of the corner and then in verse 12 it says neither is there salvation in any other but for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved it's through that resurrection and the risen Christ that forgiveness comes that salvation comes that righteousness comes that regeneration comes to everyone everyone that believes Acts chapter 5 verse 30 the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree verse 31 it says him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior he rose from the dead and it is that resurrection and the power of that resurrection that makes him the savior of everyone who repents and believes on the lord for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins we're looking at point number two point number two our redemption and our righteousness through his resurrection resurrection it's not just you know going on the street raising up palm fronts dancing it's not the celebration of the worldly minded it's not the dancing of the worldly minded it is not the exchanging of gifts by the worldly minded that shows that we believe in the resurrection the resurrection of christ brings redemption 
it brings righteousness into every life as we believe on him look at ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 ephesians 1 verse 7 in whom we have at the present moment we have this present day we have a present experience we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace verse 13 in verse 13 in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with the holy spirit of promise verse 14 which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory verse 20 it says which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead the scripture telling us every time in the new testament in the gospels in the epistles that he rose from the dead and then he tells us the consequence of that resurrection from the dead and he set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places verse 21 far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come verse 22 and has put all things under his feet because he rose from the dead because he's no more in the grave and because the power of the highest has lifted him up from the grave and is now seated on the right hand of majesty on high he the almighty god has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church verse 23 which is his body the fullness of him that feeleth all in all three things here number one righteousness by faith number two renewal in fullness number three responsibilities of the faithful all because of the resurrection number one righteousness by faith in his resurrection we're looking at romans chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 6 romans chapter 10 reading from verse 6 but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above. Already he came down. Already he showed us the way. Already he revealed the might of the Almighty unto us. He's come down so that we don't have to say, Who oh, will go up to heaven and bring him down? Look at verse 7. Or who shall descend? into the deep that is to bring christ up again from the dead that's done already the power of god came rolled the stones away it was like an earthquake and with that earthquake all those soldiers they fell to the ground as if they were dead and then christ our savior a redeemer 
a substitute the sacrifice the lamb of god rose from the dead and then we're told in verse h it says in verse h but what says each the word is nice thee even in thy mouth and in thine heart that is the word of faith which we preach now verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead you see that the resurrection has happened already the reality of that resurrection the resurrection has happened already the revelation of that resurrection and our regeneration our coming to god is effected by that resurrection is not for you as an individual that you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved amen, amen. thou shalt be saved amen. amen look at verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness with the heart man believeth unto righteousness you know when you believe that belief will move you from where you were sinfulness will move you forward into righteousness don't believe those people that say i believe i believe they're still in their past lives i believe i believe they're still drinking sin smoking sin eating sin covered with sin i believe i believe they're still in the life of the past life the past ideas and the past resurrection and the past uh, the past evil the past life they live when you believe there is a difference in your life if you are not a nominal christian a church goer just somebody going in crawling in and crawling out like an ant like a worm if you truly believe it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you see the connection there salvation and righteousness righteousness and salvation if there's no righteousness there's no salvation if there is salvation there'll be righteousness if you truly believe in the resurrection of the lord jesus christ a change a transformation in your life and you move from unrighteousness into righteousness give me a good amen if you are there yeah. romans chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 22 it says therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness verse 23 it says now it was not reaching for his sake alone that it was imputed unto him verse 24 but for us also for me also for you also we believe in the same Christ, risen Christ. And the first century Christians believed and they became saints. Saint Paul, Saint Peter, Saint John, Saint Believer, by believing on Christ, the same Christ. The same resurrection, the same experience of salvation. If we truly believe today, we're no more sinners, we're saints in Christ. The Lord make you a saint. What's your name? I said, What's your name? Say, Saint 
said but I got people you have lost your voice sage may God make you a sage and the life and the attitude and the action of saintliness be in your life in Jesus name but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Let's look at number two here. Number two, renewal in fullness. Renewal in fullness by his resurrection. When somebody is weak, tired, weary, exhausted, shoulders down, legs wumbling, babona bent, and he's walking. You can tell he needs renewal. You know, in our lives as Christians, you mean a Christian believer, real believer, for a number of years now. To read the Bible, your eyes are dim. To live and stand for righteousness, uncompromising. You are wumbling. You can't stand. You couldn't stand like you were standing in your earlier year, years of the Christian faith. And to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Uh -uh. You are not as sharp as you were in the earlier years. You are dull. You are dreary. And it appears you are drying up. Anemic. No strength. No power. But as we come and we declare the resurrection of Christ and that resurrection power afresh and new comes upon your life a renewal but I call a renewal Nigeria a renewal Africa a renewal Asia, America, Europe when that new power of the resurrection comes upon your life a renewal in Jesus name your mind renewed your heart renewed your energy renewed your power renewed your sharp sight vision renewed there is a renewer there is the fullness of renewal by the resurrection of jesus and i pray this day renewal in your personality renewal in your conscience renewal in your heart renewal in your inner man renewal in jesus name you know when you've been using that car for some time you now the engine is growing old the body is growing old even the steering growing old sometimes it will you know be stiff or safe you cannot move it again and then you take it back to the place you got it and they renew it for you and they renew every part every knot and every part they renew and then you take it back again you put the key inside even the sound is different the movement is different and everything there is different that's what renewal does in our heart in our spirit in our soul in our behavior in our action there is a renewal not partial renewal renewal in fullness by the resurrection of christ look at romans chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 11 romans chapter 8 verse 11 but if the spirit of him that raised up jesus 
from the dead dwell in you not in your head in your heart dwell in you not just in knowledge in experience if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies i didn't hear a good amen there amen. quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you look at chapter 6 reading from verse 4 romans chapter 6 verse 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also shall walk in newness of life when you believe that resurrection and the resurrection of christ takes effect in your heart in your mind in your soul in your spirit in your life the power that raised him from the dead will also make you to walk in newness of life in verse 5 it says for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection verse 6 knowing knowing this that the old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin amen, amen. henceforth we should not serve sin whoever you serve that's your master servants serve masters if you're serving sin sin is your master not the savior if you're serving self self is your master not the savior and and guess if you're serving satan satan is your master you read the bible from cover to cover you're serving satan you may come to every meeting every retreat every revival every crusade if you're serving sin sell satan sin is your master self is your master satan is your master but when you come to christ and you experience the power of his resurrection henceforth from now on in the private in the public in the crowd all alone by yourself henceforth you should not serve sin i will not serve sin look at your voice i will not serve sin some people talk as if I don't want sin to hear so that sin does not say, uh-uh, you said you will not serve me, then come and grab me. And so they talk, I will not serve sin. I will not serve sin. I will not serve sin. I will not serve Satan. Now, sin will come and say, what did I hear you say before your pastor there? You said you will not sub me, and then they will threaten you. You say what I said in church is what I said at home, is what I do in the community. I will not sub see. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, 
being then made free from sin ye became the servants of righteousness look at verse 22 in verse 22 but now be made free from sin and become servants to God ye become the servant of righteousness and holiness looking at Ephesians chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 23 Ephesians chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 23 and be renewed renewed we're talking of total renewal we're talking of renewal in fullness we're talking of renewal in your heart in your mind in your soul in your life we're talking about renewal renewal of your character renewal of your behavior that when christ the risen christ comes to reign in your life your life is renewed your behavior your character is renewed and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and then in verse 24 it tells us and that he put on the new man before you can put off your new clothes you put off the old clothes the one smelling the one that is thinking the one that is odious odious to you odious to man odious to heaven odious to earth put that off and then the new character and the new behavior and the new lifestyle that she put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness i pray it will be fulfilled in every life you know there are people they come to retreat then they go out of the retreat like they walk before the retreat they're still like that after the retreat nothing renewed nothing changed nothing transformed but for you i was talking to somebody there for you this will be different in jesus name total renewal complete renewal renewal in fullness by his resurrection first peter chapter one we're looking at verse 3. First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope. How did he do that? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He has begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Then in verse 4, it says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you verse 5 who are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time number three here responsibilities of the faithful for the resurrection the responsibilities of the faithful now that you are saved, crucified by Christ, you are sanctified, you are dead and buried by Christ, and your life is renewed. You are risen with Christ. You have responsibilities. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. 
what's your responsibility there seek those things which are above look at your life from morning till evening from the first day of the week to the last day of the week what do you pursue what do you seek what do you run after your responsibility after experiencing the resurrection of Christ is that you will seek the things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God look at verse 2 in verse 2 search your affections on things above now if you a pilot for example when you take off from the ground and you search the flight in a particular direction heading home heading to your destination you have to stay at that and be doing changes that will still point you to the destination otherwise if you just set it and then you forget about it you will land in another destination the same thing with a christian life you search your affection on things above not on things on the earth and as you go from day to day if you just leave it like that and you don't keep on changing it moving it in the direction of things above it, you'll be derailed by the wind you'll be derailed by the clouds you'll be derailed by everything around you but every time you say i'm headed for glory i'm headed for heaven i'm headed for the mansions on high and therefore you keep on setting your affection on things above and not on things on the earth first peter chapter 3 reading from verse 10 responsibilities of the faithful for he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil and his leaves from speaking girl that's your responsibility your watch over your tongue your lips your mouth he that will love life life now and life to come and see good days good days here on earth let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no girl look at verse 11 it says let him eschew evil shun evil detest evil depart from evil jettison push aside evil let him eschew evil and do good let him seek peace let him seek peace you know a person is headed for heaven was christ our peace living on the inside of him on the inside of her will be seeking for peace in every situation he will not be the initiator or the organizer or the motivator or the originator of confusion of commotion of strife of violence of anger of fighting he will be the originator the initiator and the one that is seeking after peace he will not be seeking to make the other man angry make the other man furious make the other man jolted make the other man get ready to fight no 
a person is on his way to heaven anytime every time let him eschew evil and do good and let him seek peace and enjoy it and see verse 12 for the eyes of the lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers but the face of the lord is against them that do evil amen, amen. we're coming to point number three the rejoicing and the rapture at his return we will we'll rejoice you will rejoice you know when christ comes there will be people that will say and i know judas regretted and i know samson regretted and i know the people that know the way to heaven and the way to glory and the way was spread before them and they could easily have taken that way and they did not when the lord comes they'll be like the foolish virgins and they would say and i know then the wise virgins would have gone in and then later the foolish virgins will come and knock at the door lord lord open unto us it's too late had i known but this is the time to envisage to imagine to expect the rapture that will take place at any time and to get ready so that the rejoicing of that day will be yours in jesus name yeah. rapture look at three things here number one our right through relationship with christ number two the rapture of the righteous in christ number three the rewards of those who rise and are raptured by Christ. Look at number one. Our rights through relationship with Christ. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 32. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How? Shall he not with him also freely give us how many things? All things. That's all right. When you come to Christ and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the risen Christ, they freely will give you all things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. After that, all this sin shall be added unto you. He will freely give you all things. Yeah. Are you still there? Yeah. I said he will freely give you all things. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. Deliverance. Yeah. Health. Yeah. Prosperity. Yeah. Good things. Yeah. A good wife. Yeah. A good husband great children yeah. success yeah. alright alright when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ he will freely give us all things I'm going to make it personal he that spared not his own son but delivered him for me how shall he not freely with him give 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 me all things through your life i proclaim it and prophesy to your life in jesus name look at number two here number two the rapture 
of the righteous in Christ. The rapture. The rapture. You will not miss the rapture. Now tell me, was the good I come to the church? Was the good I read my Bible? Was the good I made restitution? Was the good I evangelize? Was the good I give? I give I pay tithes and offering. Was the good I attend all these retreats? Was the good even when we have to stay in the sun? I stay in the sun. God make this day a sunny day for you. Yeah. Sunday sunny day. Yeah. Sunday happy day. Yeah. Sunday blessed day. God yeah. was the good. I stayed there in the sun and then the rapture happens. And the saints go marching in. And because of him fighting with your wife, him fighting with your husband, hatred, unforgiving spirit. And because of initiating fight and violence, the rapture takes place and then he's nowhere to be found. She's nowhere to be found. I pray that will not happen unto you. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 51. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Verse 52. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. Rapture, it will happen. And I pray you will not miss the rapture. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 14. The rapture. You know, there are people, they have a habit of delaying reconciliation. You and your wife, you are like in a tournament of fighting, exchanging words, brutal words, angry words, thunderous words. And it was night. And then with that anger, with that thunder, with that exchange, she goes to her room, you go to your room. And while you're still lying down there, you are angry, angry, angry. And then you even remember some bad words you should have said, which you didn't remember at that time. But you couldn't get up you said that's enough tonight and then in the night the rapture takes place where is the reward and the result of all these years of labor and years of denial and years of this and years of that the rapture can take place anytime night or day here you are. You have a maid at home. Your wife is gone to visit her parents or to do some other things. And now the flesh is calling. The wife is not around to satisfy the flesh. Or maybe your wife is even around, but you're forgotten about being crucified with Christ, dead. And buried with Christ and risen with Christ. And then privately, you and the maid, you do whatever you are doing. And then uh, the rapture takes place. Look at this man who has been loud in testimony. I am saved. I am sanctified. 
I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I talk in tongues. There you are. The flesh has not released you. And the rapture takes place. Look at that man. Money. Money. Gehazi. It's been the servant of the man of God. And now, look at money on the bench there. Look at money in the offering bag. And he said, I'm out of work. I need money. And he puts his sand. And he steals from God in the house of God. And when they are leading prayer, brethren pray tonight. It's going to be great. God will do this. God will do that. He's shouting and praying. Meanwhile, stolen money is in your account. And it's there. And you are spending stolen money. And the rapture takes place. And then we are gone. He tries to jump. My brother, covetousness will not allow you to make it. Where will you be? After all this profession of religion. After all the participation in religion. Where will you be when the rapture happens? What will be your joy? That a million naira hindered you from eternity with God. What will be your joy? That ten minutes of fleshly pleasure with a maid, with a harlot, with a strange woman hindered you from making the rapture. Everybody knows you here. You are popular. And whatever you tell people to do, that's what they do, good or bad. And then, as popular as you are, the rapture takes place. And you are nowhere to be found. What will be your story at that time? First Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Verse 15. For this was say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air I will be there I will be there so shall we ever be with the Lord amen, amen. look at number three here the rewards of rising and raptured by Christ by the grace of God, you are saved, you are sanctified, you are holy, you are righteous, you are persevering, you are enduring every time until the end, great will be your reward. Amen. Amen. Your reward will be great. Amen. You know, faithfulness to God devotion to God consecration to God commitment to God rain or sunshine I cannot forget I will not forget was it yesterday the sun was like this all of a sudden the rain came pouring down were you here 
Were you here? Where are you? Amen. I love your commitment. And I love your dedication to the Lord. Some people were trying to, you know, pick up their chairs and run here and run there. And then our state overseer came and said, Stay where you are. Surprisingly, people, VIP, professional people, elderly people, adult people, as they heard the voice of our state overseer, Stay where you are. Everybody stayed. And then they put chairs on the head, but the stage and the rain was coming down. You will not lose your reward. <laughs> you know, those are religious people who are not born again when the rain is falling like that, and one man is even as is not even as tall as you are, and he says, Stay there. Nominal Christian church goers who are not born again, no salvation. They say, What's he talking about? You come and stand here if you're saying stay there. And then they go to other places, not born again. Thank God for those who are born again. Yeah. Can I see your face? I, th I said, Thank God for those who are born again. Yeah. Sunshine or rain, pressure or pleasure difficulty or challenges persecution or no persecution you stay where you are you will not miss your reward look at revelation chapter 22 and i'm reading from verse 12 revelation chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 12 and behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. To give to my brother, my sister, my boy, my son, my daughter, everyone there to give to everyone. The Lord will give you the reward. Behold, 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 I come soon. I come suddenly, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, is coming for you at the rapture. And it will give to every man as his work shall be. Am I waiting for any reward there? I said, are you waiting for any reward there? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, whatever happens, I will not miss my reward. Saved, I will not miss my reward. Sanctified, I will not miss my reward. Crucified with Christ. Dead and buried with Christ. Risen with Christ. On that final day, when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive, we shall be raised together with them, Cut up to be with the Lord forever and ever. I will not miss my reward. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.